This channel is all about providing weekly recovery topics, tips and peer, peer support <laughs> interviews, peer support interviews that are going to help you um, in your recovery journey. So if you're new here, welcome. Welcome to session two. If you've ever been to an NA or an AA meeting, which oh, I haven't, but, but uh, they have very good results, but I know that there's this saying um, that they refer to, which is about, we admit that we were powerless over our addiction and that our lives had become unmanageable. We admit that we were powerless over our addiction and our lives had become unmanageable. I want to read to you from Romans 7. It's interesting, this is verse 14 to 25. It says, we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do for what I want to do. I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, do it but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me. Nothing good lives in me, sorry. That is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I can't carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I don't want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Does it sound familiar? <laughs> the process of admitting that we are powerless is the beginning of our strength. The process of admitting that we are powerless is the beginning of our strength. When we step out of denial and into the cold hard truth of the train wreck our lives have become and that our addiction has been, we are beginning to lift some spiritual weights. Jeremiah 6 verse 14 God speaking about us says, my people are broken and shattered. They put on plasters. In Australia, we call them band-aids. They put on plasters saying, it's not so bad. I'll be fine, I'll be fine. But things are not fine. There's an old Monty Python sketch about knights in armor fighting and hacking off each other's arms and limbs and jumping around saying, I'm fine, I'm fine, it's just a flesh wound. But addiction is not just a superficial flesh wound. It is a deep spiritual matter. But when we challenge the denial of how things really are, we are on the path, the right path to recovery. A friend of mine is an ambulance worker and when they arrive at the scene of a tragedy or an accident, they don't just um, shy away from the situation and think, oh no, it's too dark so I couldn't possibly look. They don't just put a band-aid on that situation on a broken leg or something. Go, oh, you'll be right, mate, it's just a flesh wound. Um, and we don't want them to either. We want them to really look at the situation and deliver what we need uh, for full health and recovery. We want to no matter how you come at it, that broken leg needs attending to by someone, somewhere. The reality is that our addiction is like the scene of that accident. And in that moment, much like in childbirth, we have to put aside our natural tendency to go, Ooh, I don't want anyone to see my private parts. <laughs> There comes a time where you simply can't hide anymore. Addiction starts off as this thing that we can hide under our skirt or our kilt. Uh, we function normally for a while, but eventually down that path, it leads to the same end. Trouble, pain, loneliness, isolation, financial and emotional bankruptcy, illness and relational breakdown even prison for me 
Proverbs 14, verse 12 and 13 um, puts it this way. There's a way that seems right to a person, but in the end, it leads to death. I always thought myself a semi-smart sort of person, but I was a heroin and alcohol addict for years and years, as was my first husband, who died of the complications of his addiction, along with many of our friends. And perhaps you've had that similar experience. There comes a point where we cannot hide in denial anymore. And the truth is, you're not really hiding it anyway. Our friends and family know our addiction and sin is dragging along behind us like someone who's into the bathroom and has a bit of blue paper dragging along on the bottom of their shoe or worse. <laughs> it's obvious where we've been. I used to think uh, I was so cool, you know, and I prided myself on it. But can I read you something from Isaiah 5, verse 18? It says, Woe to those who draw sin along with cords of deceit and wickedness as with cart ropes. I talked about toilet paper, but the Bible's talking about cords of deceit and cart ropes. To those who say, let God hurry, let him hasten and do his work, because I want to see it. Well, actually it says, so we may see it. But you get that attitude. Let it, let it approach, let the plan of the Holy One of Israel come so that we may know it. They're being sarcastic. They're challenging God. I was right there. What, is, what does Isaiah say? Woe, woe. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking and champions at mixing drinks, who acquit the guilty for a bribe and deny justice to the innocent. Whoa, this is the Bible, says this. You know, there is nothing new under the sun. The reality is we all have it all hanging out. It's obvious. So what will you gain by ditching the lies? How about freedom? We are all slaves to that thing that masters us, whatever that thing is for you, porn, drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling, alcohol, shopping, whatever you are enslaved by, are you free to not do it? Um, I never used to go on holidays because I couldn't be away from my source. I would begin to panic if I thought that maybe I was going to run out of the gear. Galatians 5 uh, verse 1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Years ago I used to listen to the song uh, Slave to Love by Roxy Music. But actually there's nothing romantic about being a slave to love. Actually there's nothing romantic about it at all. The bottom line is that slavery and being a captive to something or someone reduces us. Trying to make us small. There is nothing romantic or good about it. So let's face the truth together. Turn our truth over to God. He knows it all already anyway. You are good enough, just as you are. But let's look at the broken bits. God loves you fully just as you are. And he doesn't want you to continue a small existence of bondage. Your sin brokenness, hurt, self-loathing was paid for on the cross by Jesus. The Bible encourages us that it is the truth that will set us free. I know it for myself and I know it for you. 
a life with Christ will equip you to walk in freedom from addiction and bring healing the ongoing process of sanctification. When we turn from our sin, we complete that heavenly exchange where Christ said, it is finished. Can I encourage you this week to nourish your soul? It's okay. It's not as daunting as it seems, but just set yourself the goal of one achievable action this week that's going to help you move from denial to embracing truth, healing, transforming truth. And most importantly, maybe spend some time in the Word of God and prayer. Connect with one other person this week. I'll add some extra bits in the description below if you want to do some extra reading. And God bless. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell. And we'll see you next week.